Good morning, everyone. This is Ashish Arukya, CFO of Glassin. Uh, Glassin, uh, as you know, has a long and successful history of incubating large new businesses for the group. While we started as a textiles company 74 years back, but since then we have incubated many leadership businesses under Glassin. We entered into chemicals business as backward integration to BSF. And now we've made it into an independent business, which is the largest player in the country. We entered into cement when market was entrenched with incumbents, but over time we created the number one cement company with commanding presence across the country, supported by a strong brand that resonates with customers and trade. We also have experience in incubating consumer-oriented business in a very, very different sector through fashion and retail and financial services. There are a couple of reasons why we are now entering into this new sector. First of all, Grassim today has an extremely strong balance sheet, which would get further strengthened with the proceeds coming in from sale of fertilizer business. Second reason is that the standalone business of BSF and chemicals are established market leaders. They're already in the process of completing their large traffic uh, uh, cycle. In this backdrop, it is an opportune time to add a high growth, high ROC business, providing growth and importantly, consistency to its earnings. The foray into paints is a strategic portfolio choice for Gretchen. Entry into this uh, B2C business will provide scale and growth to the existing portfolio of the company. Within paints, decorative paints will be our focus area. It is a large 40,000 crore market with unorganized players having a surprisingly one-fourth market share. Decorative paints segment has grown about 11% during the last five years ending 2019 and is expected to grow even faster owing to demographics led demand, urbanization, shortening of repainting cycles, and other important factor like housing for all vision of our Prime Minister. There will be a shift of demand from unorganized players to organized players, which will likely be catalyzed or accelerated with our entry into the segment. We strongly believe that we have all the ingredients of being successful in executing our paint strategy. Our strategy includes becoming a strong number two player over a period of time. To be successful in paints, you need strong distribution and brand. Grassin has an inherent advantage of having access to pan-India distribution presence through Birla White and significant brand equity that it has in the existing channel. And this will provide us with a meaningful head start and speed is going to be important out here. To clarify now, that we now that we have the uh, board approval, we will engage in discussions more formally with Ultratech to discuss the ways to synergize and gain access to this distribution network through a win-win arrangement on an arm's length basis. We will target pan-India market with multi-locational plants. We are likely to incur capex of around 5,000 crore over next three years in the initial phase. The overall project will be funded through internal accruals and debt. We believe that this sector will be value accretive to all our stakeholders. Our plan is oriented to achieve 20 plus IRR through this project. I would now like to introduce Himanshu Kapania, who is now the business head for Birla White. He's putting together a team of sector veterans 
who have prepared the strategic plan which has been approved by the board. Eventually, the business will be run in a focused manner with an independent manage and talent with the relevant experience. We also have Dilip Gore, Managing Director of Grassim, on the call. We'll now take the questions. I would like to highlight that we may not be able to answer some of the questions which are competitively sensitive. So I just want to hand over to the operator now to take the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Our recipients are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Manoj Menon from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. My team, uh, uh, congratulations, uh, you know, on this foray, and I'll be very pleased. Uh, uh, that's the first time I'm actually attending a grassroom call. Uh, so I actually cover consumer sector, uh, you know, dissect, and also the federal research here works very closely with Cripple. So just a couple of questions, uh, you know, for, uh, to, to begin with, and then come back in the queue. Uh, the first is, uh, you know, some comments from you, uh, a little bit more on this energy spot, uh, and also, uh, is there any technology, uh, you know, angle there, uh, you know, I know that kind of, you, know, you just indicated that you know, they want to talk everything which is completely sensitive, but do you think that technology is a differentiator is what I would just want to ask, that's one. The second aspect, uh, what we have observed in pains uh, is that uh, given that the, uh, you know, consumer decides once in maybe four or five years to paint, the, the brand decisions are probably made over decades because it takes a, it's, a, it's an extremely long gestation, uh, you know, consumer recall value investment, what is needed. So just some thoughts from you on, uh, you know, how quickly you believe you could ramp up organically or do you think there is an inorganic opportunity also you look at at some point in time. Those would be the first two. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm going to... Uh uh, you know, start off, and then I will request Himanshu to uh, step in, okay? So, uh, on the synergy bit, right, uh, Bela White, as you're aware, is a market uh, leader in white cement and putty uh, distribution and, and market, right? And they have access to pretty much the same influences as things. So the whole idea would be to discuss with Ultratech to figure out how, uh, you know, the paint team can work together with Birla White to access that distribution setup that exists. Of course, it has to be done in collaboration with them. There has to be uh, a formal arrangement. We will have to have it on arm's length basis. But that is something that is available within the Grassin group to to access. So, and that was, you know, that's the main challenge uh, for any new player, which is to set up a large distribution setup. The uh, second question that you had on technology, see, I think, you know, any new business today, if you're trying to set up, okay, the, the importance of technology uh, is very, very important. Right, the uh, you have to have product differentiation, etc. So we will look at latest technology. We have the benefit of being a new player. We will look at latest technology that is available, uh, you know, to pour into our paints uh, uh, business. Uh, you had a question on brand. You're absolutely right. The brand uh, takes time to build. Uh, fortunately, out here, we already have a touch point with our uh, influencers to whom the brand matters, and they understand the Birla and Aditya Birla brand. So we will leverage our existing brand equity to also accelerate our uh, brand uh, for, for, the, uh, for the entry. Uh, 
Himanshu, uh, could I hand over to you uh, if you would like to add uh, further? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ashish. Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, good morning um, uh, to uh, all the participants. And uh, uh, maybe uh, it could be a, a late night for some of the participants who are these. Uh, uh, secondly, I wish all of you are safe um, in this COVID era. There. I just want to uh, firstly uh, reiterate what Ashish has said that uh, we, the journey for us now begins. Board has uh, uh, has given us approval to foray into paints. They have identified the quantum of capex they would like to uh, invest in the first three years, and the foray is big, uh, uh, has just begun. We have been um, as a team, uh, a, a set of team uh, identified uh, within the group and from outside whoever significant uh, experience on, uh, on the industry have been working uh, on multiple uh, topics, uh, both on the product, uh, the uh, technology front, and the work that we need to do on R&D for a, a reasonable period of time, almost a year and, and above. Uh, we also have been uh, uh, carrying out uh, uh, consumer research, trade partner research, um, as well as uh, uh, mm, uh, influencers uh, research to to understand um, what are the, the present practices as well as uh, to understand what are the gaps in the uh, in the marketplace so we are we have uh, have a broad strategy which is ready at this point of time uh, we now get into the execution phase uh, beyond that i think it would be uh, unfair for me to be able to talk uh, at this point of time but uh, we just want to reiterate that we are going to be serious into the uh, uh, into the decorative paint business. Back to you, Ashish. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you, Ashish, very much. So all the very, very best, and uh, hope to touch base soon. So thank you. Good luck. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gunjan Prithiani from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Dean. Thanks for taking my questions. Um, just two questions. Firstly, on the related point, which was brought up earlier, clearly this is a very oligopolistic industry with strong brand recall, and there are uh, definitely barriers to entry. So uh, with the kind of investments we are calling out 5,000 crore, we seem to be going really all out. Would have you think it would have made sense to like test the waters initially with go, you know, go with relatively modest investment and then take it this big? I mean, five thousand at the outset probably puts you second largest in capacity. You know, uh, I mean, it will it will be bigger than the second largest in the industry, right? So, any thoughts there? No, see, I think we we've been studying this sector like Himanshu said for for long, right? It's a very attractive sector. We would like to enter into this sector and capture the value, uh, you know, with speed. So I think it's important that uh, we set up the infrastructure to be a strong number two player, uh, you know, as soon as uh, it is possible for us to do. So, uh, and, and there are other advantages, operational advantages that we have. Uh, uh, you know, due, due to which we are looking at this kind of a uh, capex plan. Uh, Himanshu, would you like to add uh, anything here? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Gunjan, uh, good morning. Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, I, uh, we have to keep reminding everybody that uh, Birla White has been in this business for decades. Uh, and uh, the product uh, white cement and putti are uh, distinct from ultra tech products which is in the gray cement space and uh, almost entire distribution of Bella white reaches uh, to to the paint outlets and we have a pan india presence so there is a uh, connect uh, with the uh, trade partners for decades we are not discussing a short period, but for for decades. Similarly, it has a, a great association with influencers, 
lakhs of uh, influencers and the applicators and painters and uh, so there is a, it's a brand which is well known and the brand uh, of Aditya Bala Group is well known uh, in the paint industry though not from the top coat it is well known in the under coat segment mm -hmm. but it is an important component in the paint industry especially for influencers and trade partners and uh, we believe that is going to be an important element for us to, for our entry. So both brand as well as uh, our distribution presence um, are going to give us the head start as Ashish was mentioning. And uh, if we have to do it, and uh, we have to make sure that our multi-location outlets can serve the entire uh, country. Uh, if you have to do it on a regional basis, uh, then we won't be able to do justice to the shareholders which we believe and the sector that we are renting in is uh, huge potential and uh, we will miss out the potential if we delay uh, going through multi-step so Okay, got it. Uh, I mean, just to get this whole CAPEX thing right, if you can just tell us by when the capacity, I mean, what is the timeline for the capacity commissioning and when you talk about this being the second largest uh, player in the industry, is there any, uh, you know, time horizon that you're looking at uh, given the, it, it's already, you're talking about a head start and the aggressive, um, you know, CAPEX commitment here? Ashish, man? Yeah, please, go ahead. So, uh, uh, first and foremost, the journey has just begun. Uh, so we are, uh, uh, this CapEx has been uh, primarily given to for us to be to set up multi-locational plants. And we are uh, in discussion with uh, multiple uh, state governments and they are all uh, vying for us to be to set up our place. So the current focus will be to get our manufacturing in place. And uh, mm, as we are ready for launch, we will be, uh, we'll definitely come back to you. Uh, and start sharing details of our launch. Uh, as regards uh, how long we we'll expect, I think we expect a reasonable period of time to be able to reach the number two position. But the focus I keep reminding everybody, uh, it is the uh, operative word is number two profitable operations. Okay, got it. Just last one from my side on, uh, you know, more on the business structure now. I mean, uh, Grasim, um, you know, Ashish, every three years we have been seeing this structure change a lot, right? I mean, being the whole of them and then, you know, NBFC and then we had this whole telco issue. Uh, I mean, to that extent, can you just, think, you know, share your thoughts as to how should we think about next three to five years, given that this is a very sizable business which comes at the standalone level? Uh, is there a case uh, to look at the, uh, you know, simplification of the business structure uh, from, an, you know, from next three to five year perspective? So I think if you look at Grafen uh, over a period of time, uh, what we have tried to do is create large focused and loan businesses within Grafen, right? And uh, and that, that's how we created viscose as one segment and chemicals as a second segment, okay? And now that we, we feel that there is a need at, for a third large business to sit within Grassim so that the relative size of Grassim standalone in comparison to the consolidated uh, Grassim is meaningful, okay? So the third leg of growth we've identified as paint which is a significant business. It's not a, a small business uh, that we can add. And this changes the profile of standalone Grassim in terms of scale, in terms of its value. Uh, also, it reduces the volatility because if you look at chemicals and VSF, okay, it, it's still prone to some price, price volatility, though we have certain inherent advantages of cost, etc., in those businesses. So adding something like a, like paints, a consumer-oriented business, will remove that uh, uh, volatility as well. Plus, at the same time, like I said, hopefully the holding company discounts will reduce over a period of time when there's heft added to the standalone uh, grass end. Uh, in, in fact, I feel that this entry actually gives more clarity to the capital allocation that we are going with high IRR business 
and plus there is more focus on standalone business of Crescent. Sure. No. No. Thank you so much. No, it makes sense at least it takes away that idea on uh, fund infusion to that. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav Martha from Fidelity Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, so good morning. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, the question that I had was, uh, you know, we are talking about the overlap in the distribution with Villa Byte. Uh, how much of an overlap would be there uh, in the paint business versus white cement? Uh, if you could give any broad, just like a broad sense. Yeah, Himanshu, would you uh, like to yeah. make yeah. Good morning, Madhav. Uh, if I have understood your question, you are asking, is there an overlap? Uh, in the paint business with the Billa White business? Uh, no, I, I, I understand that there is an overlap. I wanted to understand how much of an overlap is there. Like, does, does every shop that sells white cement uh, can sell paint? And today, uh, uh, the people who are in the paint business, uh, I understand that they, they, it's shown through hardware shops, etc. as well. So, I just wanted to understand that. Okay. So, I'll give you a history uh, of uh, Billa White. It was originally a white cement uh, uh, manufacturer, but the applications of white cement has uh, over a period of time uh, changed from uh, uh, from requirement from the consumer end uh, has reduced and requirement uh, for uh, putty manufacturers has increased. A very large consumption of uh, white cement goes for uh, putty manufacturers. Yet, no, no doubt, there is still a requirement uh, of white cement. Uh, the second largest application is white cement wash. White cement wash is in the lower end category of the paint, and, uh, and uh, the uh, obviously the largest segment now for them is putty in the absolute size. Uh, so, so on overall trade partners that we present on a pan India basis, um, we, uh, from pure hardware outlets, uh, uh, white cement doesn't get sold from a grey cement outlet; it gets sold from hardware outlets over a period of time. Most of it is migrated to the paint outlets. So paint uh, outlets are the most uh, um, uh, aggressive and they stock uh, putty of multiple brands uh, as well as they uh, stock uh, white cement for uh, especially in the small towns, in the rural areas and mid-sized towns for whitewash uh, facility for a whitewash, uh, white cement whitewash. So a, a, uh, I, would, uh, I would put between 70 to 80 percent uh, of the outlets uh, sell things. Okay, that, that, that's great for me. And so I, the, the other question I had was, um, would you be able to share anything on the brand positioning or the branding that, that we would have uh, for the paint business? Anything that you've decided on? I think it's very premature. We would have to uh, keep reminding that we, uh, uh, Aditya Billa brand uh, has been built over uh, decades. Uh, it stands for trust stands for loyalty uh, and uh, Billa White as a brand uh, has a very strong association with the paint sector and we would uh, uh, try to we will try to take the benefits uh, of uh, what currently exists. I, I think it's premature to be able to start this, defining images positioning at this point of time. We will definitely share closer to the launch. Understood. And since this last question from my side, uh, uh, how far are we from the launch? Like, is it more like one year, six months, uh, any broad sense? Uh, as we mentioned, we've, uh, 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 yesterday what happened was the memorandum of understanding uh, has been modified, allowing us to be able to enter into paint. So, okay. uh, we couldn't have done anything till the, uh, till the actual um, uh, board approval was received, which is what has been received yesterday. Uh, we have been doing most of our thinking uh, and uh, pre-preparatory work uh, over the last uh, 9 to 12 months uh, and all the plans are ready. Now we get into execution mode. Uh, exact timeline is a little uh, too early to be able to start sharing timelines, but we would over a period of time uh, give you uh, more former timelines as we go forward. Understood. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Rateria from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. 
Hey, Asisha, uh, congratulations on the welcome move and all the best, uh, first of all. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, this investment of 50 billion, you would have uh, kept in mind a certain scale in terms of capacity. So, what would be that capacity uh, which you have in mind in terms of uh, uh, volume uh, volume front uh, over the next years? So, as in you're talking about the paint capacity? Yes, paint capacity. What, what, what is the capacity which you're going to set up with these investments? Yeah, I think, let, let me... Let me repeat, maybe, you know, you, you have the amount in front of you, okay, and uh, we have said that we would like to be a strong number two uh, player uh, in this very attractive uh, sector. So that should give you some sense. Again, you know, it's, it's uh, a little early. We are looking at the configurations of plants, et cetera, and CapEx has many, uh, you know, elements, as you know, it, it could be backward integration it, uh, in line with Arthur Nirvar Bharat. There could be front-end capex. So maybe I'll, I'll leave it to that, that it's early, but uh, Himanshu, if you have anything to add, uh, please. Uh, please. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is premature to be able to start sharing absolute details. It's all on the drawing board. We are going to get into action, and we would, in due course, definitely share this. But the, I think it is not so complicated or difficult for uh, uh, analysts to cover the sector to be able to uh, calculate the broad capacity based on the capex uh, guidance that we given. Okay. Secondly, uh, with uh, this uh, business getting funded from internal approvals the net, uh, does it change anything from a capital structure perspective for Grassim? Uh, it stays within that uh, taken back of uh, whatever capital structure you have always said in the past? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. I think, you know, Grassim, like I keep saying, it's a triple A rated entity. It has a strong balance sheet. Uh, we have further improved it with fertilizer sale. Uh, it's very important that we retain this strength of uh, Grassim. Uh, plus, we have access to all kinds of debt at the best rates uh, possible in the corporate side. Uh, and, and, you know, we've got the new capacities of Wisco's uh, and chemicals coming uh, this year or next year. Uh, which will help us improve the EBITDA profile further. So I, I think we are closely going to watch our standalone net debt to EBITDA, and uh, we, we are not changing the uh, thresholds uh, of not crossing around, you know, three times, three, three and a half times, and, you know, three times more likely. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Cheda from Inam Holding. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, best of luck to the management team for entering into this uh, high growth business. Uh, so just a, a few questions. Uh, uh, regarding the CAPEX, you said uh, you would be putting up a Pan-India multi-location plant. So uh, are there any plans to use your existing uh, locations uh, itself to put up this manufacturing capacity? That is one, uh, so that uh, the uh, CAPEX uh, and the capacity can happen much uh, earlier. And would you be looking at the outsourcing model or uh, is this business plan purely on 100% in-house manufacturing. Thank you. Okay. So, yes, we are uh, in discussion with uh, multiple uh, divisions uh, and companies within Alitabella Group uh, for uh, them whether they have uh, locations available. And uh, uh, and the process uh, is currently on. We are looking both for outside and uh, within the group. Uh, and uh, going forward, we will take the most uh, uh, appropriate call, which will, uh, which is value related uh, to the paint business. Um, as regards uh, uh, our uh, current focus is uh, uh, in-house manufacturing of uh, water-based paint and oil-based paint, uh, as well as uh, the important uh, components uh, of the uh, 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 raw material. Some of this we will uh, we are evaluating um, doing backward integration. So the uh, process of backward integration as well as uh, 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 manufacturing of these 
is the current focus. Uh, there would be if we are uh, if, if the current capacity that we set up uh, needs any incremental support, then we also are aware that there is a sufficient opportunity from outsource. But that's not our key strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, just to clarify, this five thousand crores uh, is purely on. Uh, uh, putting up uh, capacity and a gross block capex, right? Or this includes a component of uh, working capital and advertisement spend, which may be required to launch this business. No, so let, let me uh, clarify. I, you know, um, so see, this is an entry into a, a a business line, right? It's a new business that we are entering into. It's not a greenfield or a brownfield expansion where it is a pretty concretized capex uh, plan with identified plant and equipment etc right so therefore what i would like to say is that uh, uh, we've identified and uh, taken approval for 5000 crore over uh, next 3 years which is the initial amount uh, there can be further capex uh, as we go along in our journey uh, uh, beyond that as well. Uh, so, you know, it's it's more of, you know, what is the fund requirement as well? So there is capex element, backward integration element, front end capex element that is involved out there. Um, but but it's mainly capex in nature, what uh, that's this 5,000 amount that we're talking about. Sure. And the last one on uh, white cement and uh, wall care putty business, obviously you want to leverage the uh, Birla brand, uh, Birla white brand uh, equity, as you said. So uh, can you throw some light on the existing uh, distribution and retail footprint of that business, obviously, which is now easily available uh, to uh, scale up this business. And uh, are you looking beyond that distribution network? And if yes, what kind of uh, uh, distribution and retail footprint uh, you would be targeting beyond already, which is existing in Birla White brand? Sure. Imanj, would you like to give some sense of Birla White distribution? Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the as far as Billa White is concerned, uh, we believe Billa White's distribution is the second largest uh, in the paint industry. Uh, and the reason for that uh, is that uh, we are a pan India operator and are present um, across uh, not only metro and uh, tire one towns, but uh, also deep into rural, uh, stretching to 6,000 towns. Uh, and we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, the focus of the distribution has been on the paint industry, and uh, we continue to expand our distribution. Uh, the process is a continuous process. Bilawat is aggressively growing its business, its current business, and continuously expands uh, its uh, overall presence. So our current belief is uh, uh, we are far, we are, we are with the Pan India uh, distribution, is really the currently the number two in terms of presence across the paint industry in terms of distribution size. Will we expand distribution? Definitely, we will expand distribution once we're ready for launch. Uh, we will, this will be the starting point, and we would obviously like to go to uh, other outlets uh, which are currently not stocking uh, our brand because our portfolio is not complete. Once our portfolio is complete. There would be dealers who have been uh, uh, wanted to uh, keep the entire portfolio from a single brand. And once we have the entire portfolio, we will obviously feel that those dealers will also like to shop our products. Yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, once again, best of luck to the entire team. Yeah. Thank you, Bhavan. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Murarka from Motilal Umpal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah, hi, yeah, good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. So, my question is around uh, uh, actually uh, the Brilla White uh, business. So, while uh, it seems like you are banking on that uh, uh, network and the strength of the business, which no doubt uh, has, has, is, 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 has a strong standing in the market, but like if you look at the last six, seven years, actually uh, the volumes in that 
business has largely stagnated the industry skills there's not been much volume growth while i believe uh, the industry has been growing so there seems to have been some loss of market share so like do you think that uh, like uh, uh, we would be able to win back some of the market share as well as face both challenges to the pain companies which have been taking away this market share from you so uh, i'm in a slight silent period uh, yeah and i you know yeah. Uh, I understand that my my core question is more broader because uh, like uh, as it looks to me and seems to me is that the market share is getting lost there. So the paint industry is in fact called a dent in that market which you have been the leader of. So like uh, I was just wondering like uh, how how confident you are that you will be able to turn it around and pull. I mean basically take the fight back to them and say that now I'm entering your segment and I'm going to take market share away from your segment. Like how how comfortable you think uh, you are on that? No, no, yeah, I mean, well, let me let me answer that question. First of all, on the performance of Birla White itself, okay, I think uh, you you should uh, uh, have that discussion with Ultratech, uh, who, who's likely to have the uh, earnings call soon. Okay, uh, uh, the you know, from Payne's perspective, what we can say is that. uh the distribution network of villa white as himanshu was saying is when you superimpose that on paint okay that's the second strongest distribution network that exists today for us to tap into okay and there is no weakening or there is no weakness in that infrastructure that is available to us so i i think that should suffice uh, and uh, you know your your question Okay, sure. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah from Investec. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I would just like to take a step back. Uh, would just like to understand uh, why is it uh, that the capital allocation is at grassroots level? Uh, now, I am a culture tech. I think the company has done nothing wrong. It has a solid balance sheet. Probably it will be net cash by FY23. Uh, it has ultra tech building solutions it has waterproofing construction capital and probably uh, one was expecting putty and cement capacity to actually double so just wanted to understand the sense why is it not at ultra tech level and at grassroots level i appreciate you said that the whole code discount would reduce but don't you think this is something which will take the sheen away uh, from ultra tech level or the multiple that what is this story that's the first question let's see i think it's it's uh, you know <coughs> It, this is our view, okay, not Altertech's view. Is our view that Altertech, Altertech is a pure play cement company, and it's a, a large cement company. As you can see, the capacity, as you can see, the uh, EBITDA size of Altertech, it's a pretty large pure play cement company. Okay, uh, Altertech has already got some expansion plan, etc., that they have. announced so their priority of uh, capital is towards uh, those plants that they are uh, uh, looking at and i think the third piece which is an important piece is that uh, selling cement and selling paint it, it requires different uh, skill sets okay uh, so paint is a more consumer oriented brand and distribution oriented kind of a business as you may know uh so you know that's why uh we have a history of incubating businesses which are consumer oriented uh it it, it gets it the paint gets important in our standalone business because of the standalone profile that improves for uh, gasm and the size that in, uh, it addresses and uh, as long as whatever synergies that we need to obtain from birla white distribution which is a small business in uh, ultra tech that synergy we can easily uh, achieve by having a discussion with them and getting into some arrangement which is uh, on a arms length basis and have access to that distribution 
Uh, right. But uh, th- thanks for the comments, sir. But if I had to look at, uh, they are actually seeking exposure into construction chemicals, waterproofing. I understand on 10,000 crores of agenda, that all new, business, new businesses uh, would hardly contribute anything. And you also did touch upon backward integration. Uh, so does it mean that uh, from a capital allocation point of view or from a group structuring point of view, one can expect uh, just businesses, uh, say, buy cement and put tea, uh, which are again not grey cement, uh, they can be actually moved out of ultra tech core business and it can be put into graphic. Uh, it will do away with the issues on probably to some extent distribution and backward integration as well. I'm just trying to allocate, uh, just trying to understand it from a capital allocation versus value unlocking point of view. Sure, sure, sure. Um, no, so I, I, you know, we are not looking at uh, uh, those kind of structures, like you said, where you know you move Birla White into Grassim. Uh, I, I think we will evaluate, like I said, ways to access. See, for paints industry, for paints, our entry into paint sector, what is important is the access to that distribution, right? And that is something we will achieve in, in the best possible way. Okay, uh, so I, I'll leave it at that. It's it's pretty premature to say what. That Arshu, is. Can I can I make one comment? Yeah, please, Kamalshu. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Ritesh. You are uh, pushing first and foremost. Uh, Alta Tech is an independent company, and we are uh, on behalf of Rasim. We are uh, uh, we are uh, sharing our point of view. Uh, now I'm I'm sharing up our point of views as an outsider and not as uh, uh, representative of two companies. There are the distribution of gray cement is in construction development and as a completely different distribution. Distribution of paint and distribution of gray cement does not overlap. I want to register number one point. Number two point, I also want to clarify this backward integration that we're talking about. Back integration we're talking about is regarding paint so paint has a mixing process and there are certain components which can be bought from outside or we can build it in-house and that is the what we are talking about. There is no correlation with what work the grey cement team does. Number three, white cement and the other businesses are very, very small component of a very large ultra tech. So it is for them to decide how they wish to grow. As regards uh, the arrangement that we will now start discussing, we could not have discussed until Grassim Board would have given us uh, a go-ahead. Now we've had informal discussion, then we will engage into formal discussion between Culture Tech. And once we engage on a formal basis, we will, as correctly pointed out by Ashish, we will work out a proper arrangement which will have two boards approvals and it will be at an arm's length basis. And it is going to be value locative for both the companies. There is no need for any other structure that's required at this point of time. We believe we can tap into the strength of distribution of, of the Lavite as well as the, uh, their property business. And uh, and it will be clearly value creative to shareholders of both the companies. So I will leave it at that. But I just wanted to clarify. So you are, there were two independent topics. Backward integration is not linked uh, at all. In order to ensure the management is able to address all the questions in queue, we request you to please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Ritesh, uh, sorry, from Ajit Modwani from Pinpoint Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good morning team and congratulations, uh, you know, on the foray in the business. I just uh, wanted to understand, uh, you know, uh, would you be sort of seeding the market before the manufacturing setups are uh, sort of uh, up and running? Uh, that's my first question. And uh, in terms yeah. of, uh, uh, you know, IRR you indicated is about 20 odd percent. So from the day you foray into the business, you know, when are we sort of looking uh, to, uh, you know, be in black uh, in which year of, uh, the operation. Sure. I'll, I'll request Himanshu to take the first question on 
uh, seeding the market before, uh, I think, incurring CapEx, is, uh, I, as I understood your first question is. On the second question, uh, you know, it, it's a new line of business again, right? So initial years, there will be negative cash flows uh, that will be there. Uh, so, you know, it, it's... <laughs> Not the forum to share the business plan for us right now, currently what it is, uh, uh, you know, but but I think uh, uh, the business plan is quite robust and we're looking at 20 plus uh, percent IRR uh, easily in this project. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, uh, Ajit, on your first question, uh, I'll request Himanshu to come in. Uh, good morning, Ajit, uh, and thank you, Ashish. Uh, um, would we launch a uh, the product before uh, we are satisfied with the quality of the product? Answer is a clear no. We are uh, going to launch. The, we are there for a long haul. It's not important that we uh, rush to launch. Uh, where we will, the current work parallelly as the manufacturing gets ready. Our teams have, will start the formulation and we want to carry out thorough testing. We are not in a hurry to launch the product. Uh, through an outsource model. We are, want to make sure that when we enter the market, the quality of our product uh, is in line with uh, what is available and in the end better, and we are able to bring in differentiated products. So clearly, this is, we are not going to take any shortcuts. Okay. Uh, Manchu ji, one, one more question. Apart from the, the balance sheet uh, trends and the, and the Brilla White brand, uh, uh, you know, that you alluded to are your sort of building blocks or maybe say the right to win. Uh, can, you, can, you, can you also highlight more, uh, you know, on the distribution fact? Because what I understand uh, is that this distribution of paint is more direct factory to dealer. Whereas if I understand the Birla White is, is more through distributor to dealer. So, so, so there is this channel difference of distribution. So if you can allude to more right to wins or building blocks that makes you uh, feel uh, confident about the success, you know, that should uh, help us understand your strategy. Okay. Uh, thanks so much. And, uh, understood your question. Uh, you are focusing on uh, distribution, but I, I want to, uh, before I uh, give you a little depth answer on the distribution part, I just want you to register that our strategy uh, has a multi multi pronged strategy, and uh, it includes uh, we make sure that uh, the brand launch is strong, uh, and we are able to capture the imagination of the consumers. Uh, make sure uh, that our products are differentiated and extremely high quality, and meet uh, not only the current aspiration of people, but bring in some differentiated products which are probably available around the globe, but not in India. Uh, and make sure that the costs uh, are uh, kept in, well in control and significant cost control through a combination of A, synergy, B, automation, and uh, C, uh, uh, make sure uh, that given the fact that we have the hindsight benefit of coming in at this point of time, we don't have a legacy cost which is applicable there. So I just want to register while we will uh, help we d uh, dwell deep onto distribution I want to register, it's not a single phone uh, strategy, only on the distribution side. Now, your question is uh, very simplistic uh, put in. Yes, we, our, we use the stockist to be able to deliver material to the retailer. Does that mean that we have no relationship with retailers? Absolutely not, right? We have uh, uh, an IT system today where we register all the paint retailers and hardware retailers. And we have a direct relationship with them. In terms of most of our promotions are directly handed over to the to the dealers. So uh, currently there are multiple models. Some companies use a CNF uh, where they stock uh, and then probably use their own transporter or the CNF transporter to deliver to dealers. We use our stockist to be able to do that. Uh, a combination of stock and sale, some cash uh, advantage there. But uh, that doesn't mean that we have no relationship with dealers. We have strong relationship. We uh, uh, register dealer. We have uh, uh, the current promotions are directly um, credited to their bank accounts. We have the uh, 
uh, the com- very strong profile details of them and a, uh, and relationship of, a, of the sales team directly with them. And how is it that I am able to talk about all of this? Because I am the business head of uh, Billa White. So I closely work with Billa White and completely familiar with this. I hope that satisfied you. Thank you. We would request the current participant to please come back in the question queue for any follow-up questions as we have several participants waiting for their turn. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Parekh from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for your team. Uh, so, you know, my question on team uh, is answered. Only one question I have in terms of the team, the management team, uh, to him answer, sir. Um, are we, I mean, uh, so in the next, uh, when can we get to know the management team, the entire team that you build it for this uh, uh, that is the first question. The second question is uh, a recommendation on the structure. Um, and, you know, Ashish did allude on that point uh, that the capital allocation actually gets more focused. Uh, but only one thing is, um, you know, uh, once the business is properly on its own, uh, like Aditya Villa Capital is now, uh, you know, a, a, at the right time to unlock by a proper vertical split would go quite well with the existing shareholders. And that would be value accretive to all of them. And that's just a suggestion that I have. Sure, sure. Uh, Sanjay, uh, point noted. Uh, uh, on the first point, uh, I would obviously defer to Himanshu. Just one point I want to make is that ABG has been amongst the best employer. Uh, because of all the reasons in it earlier that uh, Himanshu had mentioned. So we will not never have an issue of attracting the best talent in this uh, industry. But over to you, Himanshu, to add about uh, the management team. Uh, thank you, Ashish. Uh, um, and uh, um, hello, uh, Sanjay. Uh, so for, first and foremost, grafting uh, standalone businesses, uh, uh, management style is that we have a dedicated team for each of the businesses uh, uh, who remain focused to uh, to on their markets uh, 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 to an end to end business and the model that we are going to follow within grafting as a paint business concerns that they will be a uh, well defined uh, team which will run the paint business within the overall uh, grafting portfolio and this has been the model which has been successful for decades as has been correctly pointed out by Ashish. Now, we have the benefit first, before I talk about external hire, we have the benefit of Aditya Billa Group, which is a very strong manufacturing company in terms of projects, in terms of uh, uh, talent that is available on uh, on manufacturing, in supply chain, logistics, uh, all of that. And we are intending to tap the benefit, uh, the talent that exists within the uh, Aditya Billa Group. But there is obviously need to be able to uh, uh, to uh, <clears throat> attract uh, uh, the talent in from the paint industry or experience of paint industry. We already have a uh, chief operating officer. His name is Ajit Kumar, uh, who has between 26 to 28 years of experience on the paint industry, and he is working closely uh, with us to draw the uh, strategy for the company for launch of the services. We are in the process of recruiting uh, multiple people, and each uh, team member will join an appropriate point of time. Uh, so the current focus uh, is to get our product and manufacturing act in place, and that is where the recruitment is in full swing for that. Uh, the key management team will be introduced to all the analysts in due course, uh, especially when we are ready to launch. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arnab Mitra from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was on the distribution side. So what I understand, having covered the industry paint side, is that the biggest challenge has been uh, not just the contact with the dealer, but the ability to get a tinting machine installed, which is where space constraints and things like that come in. And that has been a big uh, barrier for many companies in the past who have tried this. 
So how do you think about that barrier in terms of having to install a tinting machine in shops which would have lower space? And do you have any kind of uh, thoughts of how you could come on that? So I think Arna, uh, see, this is again premature, and uh, you know these are competitively sensitive, uh, you know, plans that that can't be shared. Um, Manchu, if there's anything that you would want to add, please. Uh, uh, Arna, uh, good morning. Uh, uh, I completely agree with Ashish, but I just want to um, reconfirm to everybody on the call that we are aware. Of the entry barriers on distribution and the role of tinting machine, and uh, we are uh, making uh, as a part of our strategy, we are, uh, we are trying to find a solution for the thing. But it's premature to be able to share the thing at this point of time. Oh, th thank you. Uh, and the second and last question was uh, on the Billa White uh, business. Uh, your applicator is of course quite common with the paints business here. Uh, but like the paint companies, which over decades have had a lot of contact programs, training, relationship, uh, to help uh, understand what kind of you know uh, relationship or what kind of engagement you have with them, which could help you uh, you know in this foray as you try to move the influencer. That will be the last question. Okay. Just to clarify, besides the sales team, we have a very strong uh, uh, team of uh, service team, uh, which are uh, whose primary role is the uh, uh, launch of new products, training of applicators and painters, uh, and updating all trade partners on a, a range of products. This is an ingrained system uh, within Bidla White, and uh, it has been uh, being followed for a very long period of time. That is the reason uh, uh, we believe that a white cement based putty, uh, which actually got launched much later than acrylic based putty, and now is the uh, first choice uh, uh, for you know, all the applicators and painters. So we have a history of, of a contact program, um, not only with the trade partners, but with a long uh, with the uh, painters and uh, applicators. And it's not only contact program; we uh, we have uh, direct access to it, to them to multiple loyalty programs. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pankaj Tiprawal from Kotak Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, uh, Himanshu. Good morning, uh, Ashish. Uh, I think most of my questions have been answered. Uh, just one question which I had was, uh, is there any case study globally where uh, uh, any company has used the cement distribution uh, to enter into the paint business and has been successful or um, probably will be the first one to create that system. Just want to your thoughts on that. Yes, I think uh, you know it's, it's not cement distribution. But, uh, let me clarify: it's the distribution of undercoat already. So uh, you know, Himanshu can explain that better. But uh, putty or uh, you know, uh, and primer are undercoat. It's like an adhesive to the wall and paint. Right between the two. So, and the applicator of that is the same person, right? The painter. Uh, so, therefore, uh, you know, it is possible uh, to uh, have have an overlap in that distribution, not necessarily with the gray cement. Uh, so, uh, so uh, Ashish, I'll just take a I just incrementally add uh, to the Pankaj question. There are two channels which Ultratech has uh, for the two sets of businesses. One is the Ultratech brand and the other allied brands that they have for great new business, which is a channel which is which serves the construction industry and where the cement is sold. In where the cement outlets, there is no paint sale or there is a limited paint sale, though there is now attempt by paint companies to be able to reach that channel. But we are not relying on that channel. There is a second channel, which is a paint outlet channel, which which sells the entire uh, portfolio of, of uh, uh, consumer needs for the paint. Now, paint. Uh, where does the paint start? After you have plastered the wall, the next element is undercoat, and uh, and that you will require 
you could do at the completely lower end you could do a lime wash or a white wash then there is nothing else that was uh, the top coat or you could do an under coat as a form of putty uh, and uh, and this is sold primarily from the paint outlets which is independent outlet and which company within atta tech does that the company name is uh, billa white under the billa white brand name it is independent distribution so there is almost negligible overlap between the gray cement uh, distribution and the distribution of putty which uh, billa white says which is a maximum distribution and in the and there is also, and white cement also gets uh, stored by the paint the outlets and some to the hardware outlets as well who also store the paint but not so much so i would i want to clarify that this is there are two independent distribution outlets it's not a common outlet sure sure so uh, that was my uh, question about and thank you so much and wish you guys all the best and hope you succeed in your new endeavor thank you thank you the next question is from the line of prateek kumar from anti stock broking please go ahead yeah thanks for the presentation uh, uh sir so my question is uh, regarding i mean a few months back like we were like sort of contemplating like trimming our more than half of our 7800 crores which we are planning for 20 to 22 period 2021 period um so i just wanted to understand when this idea of like entering into this business would have originated in the team's mind um uh, like uh, like Post with the segment, which like sort of excited the team, or is it something which we were working on for two years, and we just wanted to conclude a VSF chemical capex, and then probably launch this new segment. That's that's what my first question. Yes, sir. I, I think Pratik, let me uh, take the more relevant part of the question. Right, I think it's irrelevant on you know how we had planned our capex in line of. in light of this uh, things uh, plan right uh, I, you know in if you look at you know each business is important to us right chemicals is important vsf is important paints plan is also important it's not that paints is going to necessarily cannibalize the uh, important critical capex of uh, chemicals of or vsf okay so i'm just taking the opportunity to clarify that point what i said in the beginning of the call is that vsf and uh, uh, has increased its capacity or is in the process of increasing its capacity by almost 35 40% right which will come come to fruition in uh, you know august slash uh, september so uh, it is a large capacity that is adding already so for them to add the next step change okay will give some uh, you know head room to to us and chemical likewise chemicals also has added capacity in caustic side uh, or in the process of adding in bal badal puram rehla as well as bilai okay they will focus on wrap which has been our strategy so there is no such compromise on the current capex in the in the covid quarter or year we had reduced our capex guidance because of obvious reasons uh, and a, a lot of our 7000 crore plan you know will be executed once we finish rela will uh, you know both uh, chemical as well as vsf plan so uh, i hope that to clarity um, it is now uh, you know answers your question and we have you know i, I don't know if dilip is still there on the call but we have dilip as well if, you know anything you would like to add dilip on this front i think i think we have covered it well i think so it is more just that the cost of what we are doing in vsf in chemicals so i think we all come with it so uh, i just uh, so just for the modeling purpose so, so we should build uh, this 5000 crore capex for 22 to 24 over and above 7000 which we expect to complete by 22 yes and uh, see i think uh, we are now in the uh, 
you know, the whole planning and budgeting exercise for the next year, which we will take to the board. And once the board approves, we will give uh, uh, the guidance for uh, this year, uh, the coming year, that is. Okay, so you'll have more clarity when we come back with our guidance uh, for the year. But as of now, how it stands is that ongoing CapEx continues, and uh, on top of that, we'll be having things. Sure. And then what is the number of uh, dealers Bidla White uh, Network has? Like, for example, Asian Paint has 70,000 dealers. Uh, so what will be the network of Bidla White dealers? Yeah. 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 So much you want to take that? Okay. Uh, there are nearly 54,000 dealers of Bidla White, and 70% of them are in the paint industry. Uh, thanks, team, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avnish Roy from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks and uh, congrats on this uh, diversification. Uh, my first question is uh, why now? Uh, paint sector has been a secular growth story for many years. Uh, plus, uh, we have not seen any new players succeed in the last 30 to 40 years, except maybe the new IPO which came, uh, which got over yesterday. Uh, so, is the decision anyway linked to what paint players are doing in terms of market share to your own segment? Is that a retaliation to that or if if that's not the reason, why now? Because the growth has been very good in this industry for so many years, but no new player has managed to have a success. We saw JSW uh, Paint file a lawsuit against the market leader that they are not getting to distribute, etc. So, what can you do different? I understand those 35,000 dealers, etc., a tinting machine you'll have to put, right? It is not that just because you have access, the tinting machine automatically comes. It doesn't work that way. So if you could answer these two, three things, you answered some of those, but these are specific questions. Sure. Um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Himachu on the uh, on the uh, you know question on distribution and how we like the what how can we win versus others, etc. Okay. I think uh, from the point of view of why now in terms of timing and the growth that has already happened, I think we see this growth, like I said earlier, to actually continue or to be better as well. With whole, uh, you know, aspirant demand, the demographic change, the urbanization, there is also uh, in, in the, amongst the younger population, uh, there is also, uh, you know, more rental demand that is likely to go up, and that's why you have the repainting demand that is likely to go up because the cycle will shorten. So there are many reasons why we feel uh, paint in industry story is far from over, and there is a lot of demand that is going to come from you know from tier two, tier three rural areas. If you see, they're still using. Uh, a very, uh, you know, old traditional techniques for painting their houses, and there is huge potential there as well. I think not not just paint industry, through cement industry, we've also seen how the rural demand has actually picked up and is picking, uh, is further expected to uh, go higher. So for all these reasons, I think uh, there is perfect timing to uh, get into paint industry and tap this opportunity. Um, I would like Himanshu to come in on the question of uh, new players, why, you know, reasons for their not being successful, and how can we uh, differentiate out there? Thanks, uh, Ashish. I just reiterate what Ashish has said, and important that uh, 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 the way we are thinking about it uh, is that, number one, uh, the overall paint industry, as Ashish mentioned his opening speech, is 40,000 crores. And out of this, one-fourth of the paint industry is in the unorganized sector. Number two, as you correctly pointed out yourself, there is a look fully, it's concentrated in the top four, and one player happens to have uh, a dominant share in this. 
So this gives us an opportunity to be able to fit in if we are able to build reasonably large capacity to be able to uh, look at a position of a uh, number two solid number two which can have a profitable operations. Now what gives us the confidence that we will have a profitable operations that uh, I just want to reiterate what we have been saying for the last one hour that we are not new to the paint industry. We may not have paint as a portfolio in our business but it is adjacency. It is not a business line which is not known to us. We are extremely strong on the construction speed. We are in the home of consumers through the uh, through the cement, but that's not the model that we are talking about. We have been in the home of uh, the consumer through the white cement, which is a major application, go through the paint market uh, because of whitewash uh, or in a white cement, especially in the mid-sized town. Earlier in the urban towns, now in the mid-size and the small towns and rural markets, and we, we are there in the undercoat segment in the putty business. So we are, have been, uh, we have a uh, understanding of the consumer, um, a deeply understanding of uh, influencers, the paint, as well as understanding uh, you know, the trade partners. So it's not new to us there. I think it's not not fair why others didn't uh, succeed. It's not fair for me to, to comment uh, about what was their strategy and why they did not succeed. But what we can say is our, at this point of time, uh, we have our uh, plans in place. And that comes in the central question is, great, you have your plans in place, you have access to the state partners, but how are you going to sort out the tinting machine issue? All I can tell you at this point of time was uh, as correctly pointed by Ashish that we uh, that we would not like to share sensitive information, but I can assure you that we have a robust thoughts and clarity of mind how we will solve the tinting machine issue. So I can assure every participant in this call that tinting machine issue has been addressed by us. How it is going to address by us is competitively sensitive information. And you will you see it unfold when we launch our services. We are completely cognizant of this, and I I can understand your anxiety to answer, get the answers today. But it will be unfair from our side. You will understand from our own side to to share it at this point of time when we are not ready for launch. So very useful. Just one for clarification. Uh, you said that your ambition is to be. Uh, the second best uh, profitable player. Now you are a very late entrant, maybe 50, 70 years uh, later than many of the players, which means your ad spend and your uh, uh, distributor margins, etc., need to be superior. Otherwise, how do you make a headway? Because product-wise, it's not a rocket science. It is not a high technology uh, category. So when you say second most profitable player, uh, is it different from second highest market share necessarily? Or you are saying second highest market share will lead to second highest profit. If you could clarify that. Yeah, the second uh, second one, we believe a profitable route is through scale. As we clearly, that was one of the key topics uh, that has been mentioned by Ashish. Scale to us is extremely important. And that is the reason our initial capex announced is 5,000 crores for a period of three years. I just want to remember that we will get profitability. Your questions, all these questions are relevant for any company which want to enter into any sector as later than once the uh, incumbent uh, are present. And there are sufficient and many examples in Indian economy, I'm not going to go to global economy, where incumbents have been dislodged uh, uh, by entry of uh, uh, new companies. And we have uh, a full faith in Aditya Billa, its brand, its processes, the project skills, uh, its, uh, mm, its uh, ability to, to execute uh, there. And I want to register in your mind because you are just adding 2 plus 2. Uh, so here 2 plus 2 doesn't add up because important component is the cost structure. And we, we are missing out the last component as the cost structure. We will be, it is possible for us to, to deliver these products at significantly, at lower cost which currently some of the incumbent players have because of traditional legacy costs. 
which we will not be born with. So it's easy to to just add and have the current practices and say everything which is current we will have and over on a top, over the top of it we will have to incur some additional. Yes, we will have to make certain investment in the market. I think there is no doubt about it. And Ashish alluded to the fact that they will need some cash to, to do that. But that's that's okay. But we are. I just want to convey a single point. We are serious in this business, and the announcement of this capex is to be able to give that indication that we are there for to stay. And this is a long haul. Let's not be driven by quarter and quarter. Let's be driven on a long haul that we want to build this business for future. Sure. Thank you, sir. That's the real answer. Thank you. Vivek Maheshwari from Jeffrey. Please go ahead. Hi, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. So two questions. First is uh, just curious that you know it's part of uh, graphic industry. Uh, if you had put it in a subsidiary, wouldn't you have gotten 115 uh, BAP, uh, which is 15% tax rate for uh, new manufacturing companies? Uh, did you not explore that aspect, or if you did, uh, why did you not go into that? Sure. See, I think there are advantages and disadvantages of uh, uh, being a division versus a subsidiary. Okay, I think the whole, uh, you know, uh, cash fungibility, etc., is lost uh, when you create a subsidiary rather than uh, having part of the uh, company itself. Uh, you know, at the same time. There could be some additional costs that you may have to incur uh, for it to be a subs uh, uh, subsidiary. Uh, and and uh, you know another point that you have to bear in mind is that you know some of these initial losses that will be there in the business due to the capex period can be uh, utilized by uh, Grasset overall. So you know there are you you have to look at different uh, many different. Uh, uh, reasons before you decide uh, which path to take uh, on a new SPV or not. I see. Okay. A uh, second question is since I have been a graphic analyst, analytic analyst as well as I cover space. So if, as I look at you know whatever you have articulated, it looks like distribution of Bilawite is the biggest piece over here. So doesn't this you know investment in graphic actually ends up being you know since you mentioned about you know arms and Actually, Ultratech shareholder actually come out as you know as the biggest beneficiary. If you know distribution is the most important thing over here, and if you are going to use Bella White Channel, which is housed under Ultratech, what are your thoughts on that? Because this again is going to create a bit of a challenge. You know, something that we have seen with Grachim at uh, different points of time. Given you know some pieces are in the mother company, some are in the subsidiary. So we keen to know your views. You know, from Grachim, from an Ultratech shareholder perspective, given that investment is done by Grachim, but the biggest motive is sitting in Ultratech cement. Yeah. No, so the thing I think, like we said, that critical uh, success factor out here would be uh, to see how we can leverage that uh, distribution that exists in uh, Ultratech. And Ultratech, by the way, as you know, it is our subsidiary, right? Now, if you look at the the value that it creates, it not only creates value for Payne's business in Rasim, but even uh, Birla White uh, gets the benefit out of that, right? One is on arms length spaces, but at the same time, when you launch Payne's and uh, sell it through that distribution channel, then there's going to be a positive rub off on uh, Patti and uh, White Cement, etc., as well, because uh, there will be overlap in the dealership, et cetera. So, you know, any such collaboration is actually clearly a win-win collaboration. And it, it has to be, uh, if there is value created for both, the value needs to be uh, uh, to both, accrue to both parties. Uh, and that has to be at arm's length basis, both commercially as well as regulatory. So I don't think there is any, uh, call it compromise or anything of that sort in the value creation that's happening to both parties due to this common 
uh, network, uh, you know, synergy that we want to achieve. Um, Imanshu, if please, please, yeah. please, please, please. Yeah. So uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, good morning, Mahishwiji. Uh, I just want to incrementally add uh, while uh, uh, Alta Tech will independently respond, but uh, mm, uh, uh, to, uh, it's publicly known that Alta Tech uh, has declared itself to be a pure cement play uh, company and will continue to expand and has had a significant capital allocation um, uh, on expanding capacity for. Uh, uh, you know, for the great cement. The paint business um, and, and under uh, Ultratech would be a very small component of the large mammoth size Ultratech is. And uh, it works well in a model like uh, Grafton where uh, from a, on a standalone basis, paint will be along VSS and uh, uh, chemicals, a significant portfolio for a standalone business. So please look at that uh, if you need focus, you need uh, 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 single-minded pursuit to, to grow the business. We are entering into a new business, new line of business, and uh, uh, the focus of the team has to be uh, clearly to, to grow this business. So it makes a lot more sense as far as uh, where we need to house uh, a paint business. Now the question that you are asking is the second question. is uh, as there is synergy with uh, Birla White, are we the, uh, what happened to shareholders? Uh, clearly, we have said it, and we've got to repeat it multiple times, that uh, uh, we have now got the board approval. We will start the engagement process uh, with uh, uh, Birla White through Alta Tech. Thank you. Due to time constraints, we take the last question from Swagato Ghosh from Franklin Templeton. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, sir, I have uh, one very pointed question on your aspiration. The second uh, largest market share uh, that you aspire to uh, 